A video probe is inserted but blocked by concrete. So several attempts are made to drill into the void. If we don't record it, bury it. History is a set of lies that people have agreed upon, Napoleon said. Even when I'm gone, I shall remain in people's minds the star of their rights. My name will be the war cry of their efforts. Bonjour, hola. Hope everyone's fine and dandy. For a cup of the old mud flood this week. Seeing as I haven't really spoke about it, it's a hot topic. What do I know about the mud flood? I don't know a lot. I know there's a lot of evidence nearly in every single country. And I know that it's been done to cover up history and for a reset, I believe, in the early 1800s. Now, whether it was a man-made cataclysm or it was a natural disaster, either way, I believe controllers took advantage of that situation and reshaped our consciousness and history and realm so and another thing is everything was discovered or refound in the early 1800s onwards you've got the sphinx and it is covered see this is another thing where the mud flood was um, say in Africa where the Sahara was I believe that's when the sand come down because that used to be Greenland then so the sphinx the pyramid they had all been sitting on grass. And there we go. It's been dug out. There's a lot of earth excavated. You can see this is when the pyramids were founded or rediscovered again. You can pretty much see how high the sand wall is. But yeah, this is not. I'm not going to be showing you anything new. This is just going to be a, a recap. But you can see how high the sand is on the pyramid on the right. Very, very high. And again, this is covering up the up to the statue. Statue's head. The sand is flowing. That's incredible, hey? I'd love to know what that says. Well, look how high that is. You're talking... Just that head is probably about 18 feet. 15 to 18 feet. Maybe 23, 20 to 23 feet with that man on top. Unbelievable, huh? You can see the line where something's flowed and stopped there. That's why it's at that angle. Again, I think this is in South America. You have a head which is buried, so God knows how far that goes down. This one again, this is in the late 1800s. And this again, how far does that go down? Just like Easter Island, the statues in Easter Island, when it was just the heads poking out. And then they discovered it's the whole bodies that went down. Even the tops of these statues were covered by about two metres. And they're not even excavated properly. This is in Egypt.
tell by the uh, statues. Again. You're talking about 15 foot worth of mud that's come down. And maybe 20 foot of mud here. Romano columns, extremely large, maybe for giants. And here, mud flood. You have Greco Romano columns. How far do these ones go down? They're quite big because just underneath the mouth, you see three men sitting on a bench. So you get an idea of how big it is. And you compare the men to the door on the right hand side, the ginormous door. Look, these men here. I wonder how far that went down. So it looks like the medieval built an arch over that after it being mud flooded. That's what it looks like. Let's have a little close up. Yeah, that could easily go down another 10, 15 feet easy. I wonder how many times our realm has been built upon. I wonder how many resets there's been. This is how you know it's not humans that control this realm. Because this has been going on forever. And I can't see it being the same group of people in charge forever. So it's inhuman. Archons or Demit, some, some sort of something. Reptilian sort. I don't know. Now this one was very interesting, this is a proper Tartarian building and you can see the street line that I'm marking out now with the mouse, started there, along, all the way along the building, you can see now where the steps were, going to the doors, there'd be about two or three steps, and there'd be about a foot of the window exposed from the ground level when the ground was there. How far do these go down? Here we can have a little little close up. So you can see that there was a door underneath the main door that might have been a window. You've got windows going down, so why would you have windows underneath? Facing brick, facing mud. That made no sense. See the line where the original ground used to be. That must go down about another ten foot. See, I did do some proper research on this, and I found out that some places did actually fill um, fill the streets up with with mud, really. Because I was putting down cables and um, new services, they just raised raised it by one level. Again, you can see the old street level. And underneath, you've got windows and doors again. And again, before and after this one. But yeah, back to the services being buried in mud. That's only, I only come across that in two or three places. The rest of it's pure mud flood. And this here is the bottom of the balcony, but it's flush with the ground floor, ground level. See now. And this is very interesting, this one, because this has got um, columns there. If the columns weren't there, I'd have said these were just foundations. But given that there's columns there, 
and they look extremely old and the block work looks old as well. Look. So you can see the old street line. And every now and then they have to put a little step up to go into the doors because the floors are altered. But you can see that you've got these columns, you've got these arches, different size arches as well. You see that a lot everywhere, different size doors. You know, at some point there was a transition of large people and small people on this plane. That were brushing shoulders. Now it's just the smaller people. Left here. But you can see these columns. Uh, like this is extremely old. Uh, you wouldn't have something decorative then bury it, would you? No, sir. At the floor level. See, and another thing about this place is you see they're built directly on top of other buildings but there'll be no cellar door, no trap door to go underneath it'll be sealed up and you won't even know it's there unless you go to do some construction work Very interesting stuff stuff really this is a close-up of the arches now if this was meant to be buried you wouldn't even bother with the arches uh, the, uh, the arches sorry pillars you wouldn't even bother with the pillars even at the top of the pillars you wouldn't decorate them either so very very fishy and that little door looks like a statue or something would have went in there it don't look like a door So, the guys are the men. So, how deep they are. Three, three blocks. Looks like each block's just under a foot. So, do the mathematics. Again, excavation work's going on. And what do you find? Buried buildings. And I'll just mark this one out because. You can see the old floor line and then you can see on the left hand side that there was a door that was buried as well. So you wouldn't have known about it. So once you start digging, you find stuff. Deja vu, eh? In. How old is this stuff, honestly? Just at the bottom of the right, it looked like it was about to be an arch. Directly underneath a city. And what's been exposed is ancient block work. And to be honest with you, this looks like directly above it. There's no, there's nothing in between the roof of that arch and that road, to be honest with you. Rose strings slapped on top of it. So that means they obviously knew it was there. Or was there a reason that people had to go underground? Or was it to kill the people that lived underground? I don't know. These are just things that go through my head. See, more arches. Underground, it's been an excavation, and here again, remove remove the dirt or the earth or the ground, and you've got more buildings going down. You've got two or three levels there. Same with Paris. I think this was Paris. It's got three or four levels. And this is a good picture. I like this one. You can see the church 
and then you can see where they excavated the grounds around it and exposed about another 20 foot 20 foot of building where did this mud come from did it come from underneath did it come from above did it come rolling in from the side well it come rolling in from the side clearly because of the way it's been left on the buildings but where did it start like can you imagine that day it happened can you imagine the people at work all the screaming all the rumbling the cut was shaking and then bam everything's covered but you can see the old street line I just marked out with a mouse and it looked like the door was originally a heck of a lot larger than what it previously was used for Again, another church. I'll just show you the street line, which is everything white, basically. Under. So then you've got two stories. This one looks like it goes down even further again. And it goes all the way. Even that building's completely mud flooded as well. See what caused this? Where did it all come from? With this amount, what? Where would it come from? It must have come from somewhere. But again, you can see a lot more digging needs to be done here because it probably goes down a lot further. But you have the windows, which just goes to prove it was originally designed to to take light in. But the windows are buried. This is a car accident. Well, not an accident. Where the ground fell in. And exposed another underground level. And another excavation exposed and another level underground. Attention, So you can see from that clip how you get these angles up the building. Here is a, another angle at a slight angle. And this is just a ridiculous, irrefutable piece of evidence of my flood. Absolute. Again, where's the door? No? completely messed up levels and the half buried and a complete another floor underneath as you do an excavation uh, you'll find another level at least one level
and it will be buildings that have been built before 1850. They're the ones that have been mud flooded. So, stage door, two windows it looks like, all blocked up. Always only half the size it's meant to be, same as the windows. Where I just can't get asking myself, where did this mud come from? Where did this earth or ground come from? And again, you can see how it's come a, a building at an angle. And again, what caused it? Why is it not in our history books? And I love the fact that there's a community that go out their way to research this stuff so we know. I love it. Just think about Star Falls. Five years ago, six, seven years ago, I never even heard of them. I might have actually. But let's go back ten years. Never even heard of a Star Fault. I'd have thought it was something to do with space or something. I don't, I don't know. I'd have thought it was a space, space station. Yeah, you've got a Capitol building. And again, you've got the pillars that go right underneath again. Looks like it goes down another good few stories. And again, underneath this house, you can see an extremely old, extremely old building or structure. You've got windows, arches, steps. And if you look where the mouse is, it looks like they're tiny, tiny bricks. But this is directly underneath a house. You can see the ground level there and the house above it. Which is strange because normally when you build a house you put foundations in. So why aren't these houses got foundations? Are they just connected directly on top? smoothed out and then built directly on top and it must have been the building clearly goes two floors underneath here you can see a few resets I can see one two three on top of each other uh, why, why? just to hide the Tartarians because we know around the same time of the mud flood, Tartarians were taken off the map and taken out of the history books. Anyway, I've probably bored you with all that. This is a salt mine. And this is a rock cut tower block. So I've, I've done my little mud flood recap. I'm just going to go through some clips because this is very interesting. I'm going to do a video next on um, cave houses and troglodytes. The tower block cut into the rock. It's not poured before anyone says that. Obviously I'm aware of poured just and just look how old the brickwork is in this here you can see at the top of the screen was the previous ground level you can see it's been excavated all the way down to the bottom probably about three three stories just a close up what you just seen. Let's have a little zoom in. You can see it looks like there's been a couple of resets done here. See that top bit's the last reset I believe. Along here would have been the original pavement line or the previous sorry. You can see how ancient the blocks are in between. 
I reckon I dug down, found another couple of floors. And then obviously dug down again and found more floors. But I wonder how, how far this really does go down. But the further it goes down, the older it looks. Now this looks like it's done with like Fred Flintstone rocks. Oh, look at that, look at the arches. And they are big old blocks compared to that guy. The blocks are like four times the size of his head. Then the next level above that is a mixture of rocks and bricks. And then above that, on the last street level, it's just blocks. So this picture is quite revealing, you can see different stages here. There's definitely a few resets in this picture, at least two. And I uh, bet a lot of money on it, it goes down a lot further. This looks like a computer, this looks like it's some electrical component. I'm just going to go through some random pictures now. And this is when some US troops went missing when they found a Vimana. Which is a flying object. Now you can pause and read this, it's just quite interesting. Cave cities of tomorrow. Now at the end of this video, I've got a bit of bonus footage where I found a troglodyte settlement. And in there I found everything. Anyway, look, the world in 20 AD, 2000 AD, you've got pods there, flat earth pods. Deja vu again, eh? Let's have a little look. It looks like there's some sort of bucket marks from the teeth on the bucket of the digger that scraped that. But you can see it's revealed brick walls. Painted blue as well. And you can see that it's even bricked in where, the, where it is now, the mouse. So, you've got bricked in, bricked up, then filled in. Seems to be the story everywhere. Now, this is an old version of Google Earth predicting it. And it was incredible absolutely incredible so the guy would put a pin anywhere on that globe and it would show a picture on the screen so you pause and have a read of that but it was predicted this is a well i don't know if it's a prediction but maybe it did come out as a bit of technology back then this was predicted for 2025, so in four years' time. I think it's 70 years old, this picture. So maybe this is where Google Earth got its idea, or maybe there was an ancient, not an ancient, an old world Google Earth that we're not aware of, we haven't been taught about, because it doesn't fit the narrative. Let's go to cave houses because I'm going to show you this footage now. Where I went, I found net curtains up, wooden door frames, glass windows, balcony, a toilet seat. I found all this and it's identical to this, but I found this in Malta. Now this picture of what you see now is identical to what I found. And here's the footage because it's very amateur. It was like one of, probably the second time I've ever held a camera when I was in this place. Here we go. Just excuse. You can see very old block work. Very old. And this is inside one of them. See, what I've noticed about these cave houses, you'll have uh, a, like a daddy one at the top, and you'll have loads of little ones underneath, like these ones. And it was all hidden, by the way. I had to walk through bamboo and all sorts of stuff to get here. 
not a lot of people know about this. Two apartments. So they cut it into the rock. They like dig out a massive cavity with a balcony, and then they put bricks in front of it as a, a wall. Sorry about the footage. But this used to be a troglodyte settlement. And I actually, when I went here, I think that night I actually found papers of another troglodyte settlement. And it was marriage papers from when someone from the troglodyte settlement in the 1950s married a Maltese civilian. Very interesting stuff. But the gold dust in this video is coming up. There's a little gate to this community. Uh, this is in one of the apartments. Again. There's a pillow in here. Look how old that is. Two doors. Right? Two next door neighbours. And another one. Oh, this is through the gate, so this is when you enter the VIP section. Very old, very, very old stuff around here. Yeah. It's rock cut, either poured and then cut, I don't know, or rock cut. But I'm very high up, I'm on the top of a mountain at the moment. So this is in a, a bathroom. There's the toilet seat. Maybe toilet rolling in that little cavity in the wall, the hole in the wall. There's a cesspit right near underneath me. You can just clear out, out the, uh, the poo, basically, the feces. Also cut up these little steps. It takes you up to another little section. You can see how high I am now. You can see the actual building that we're going to have a look at. Very stupid of me, to be honest with you. I'm very high up. I'm doing this one-handed. Look. If I fell on brown bread, look at that. And also you can see these metal bars, you can see something went there to collect. Maybe static charge from the ether. Maybe that was their power source for this community. And look, one handed up here, what a, what a donut. can't say this is poured, because if it's poured, you just pour the steps. You wouldn't cut the steps into a rock. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware of that poured theory, and I do believe it. And a lot of stuff in Malta that I do believe now is poured, but this sort of stuff. Nah. So you've got wooden frames, been painted a few times. Red, yellow, green, blue, black. Black's probably from a fire, to be honest with you. You've got shelves in there. Got windows. The bed. Shelves for ornaments. Window frames. Door frames. Curtains. Shelves. Balcony. Balcony with a view. Look at that. This is in a cave house. This 
This is what troglodytes were living like in Malta. What a view, eh? A window with a flat. Very interesting stuff, eh? Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video today. Little recap on the mud flood and a little insight to troglodyte living. So please like and subscribe. Just one thing before I go. I have set a Patreon account up. Uh, obviously all my stuff's going to be free, but if anyone wants to support me, I'll be more than grateful. Be very much appreciative. But like I said, it's all going to be free anyway, but if anyone feels like donating or supporting one dollar or one pound, I'll put the link in the description. Take care everyone. One love. Ta-da.